Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have been wanting to put out this long awaited Jackal review and I finally got a minute. So hopefully I don't make this too long and I can cut to the chase and tell you everything you need to know if you're looking to buy it. So the Jackal that I have here from Palmetto State Armory, they put this out maybe a year or two ago. I was just, uh, I learned about it about six months ago. It was a really cool idea to me because a lot of people have uh, bufferless uppers that are direct impingement. Theirs is a long stroke gas piston setting system which was very interesting to me. I also love the ACR style stock and the fact that it has eight adjustable gas settings. So the one that I have here in my hands that um, I ordered was essentially the 13.7 inch uh, barrel pin and weld welded muzzle brake with the JMAC custom brake. You can also get them in 14.5 and then also 16 inches. Uh, I have mine with the quad rail. You can also just get it with a full on uh, M-lock handguard. Comes in different colors. You can also just buy the lower. You can also just buy the upper and make sure that you do buy their lower if you're gonna buy their upper or do a certain build to ensure that you don't have like a buffer assembly on your AR uh, style lower uh, because there's already like an internal spring in here. This one that I have does not require a tack stand because the muzzle brake essentially puts on that extra length so that it does you know qualify to be like 16 inches overall if you want to detach the muzzle brake then go ahead and get the 16 inch uh one in length the reason why i wanted the 13.7 was because i do want to put a suppressor on it and typically when you put a suppressor on a 16 inch uh, barrel rifle it's super long if you're you know doing any sort of like close quarter combat or just wanting to have an enjoyable day at the range you don't want this super long rifle right so it's a little bit more aerodynamic and um, you don't have as much weight at the end uh, the great thing the greatest thing about this rifle is that it's at a very very uh, fair price so Palmetto State is known for having great great, great prices and this is like anywhere from about $12.99 and $13.45 and if you are in the Colorado Springs area, I do co-own and manage Dragon Man's, which is a farm store, shooting ranges, military museum, paintball park, dirt bike track. Come on out. We are a Palmetto State dealer and we can just order it in for you. All right. So some things that I changed out on this, I changed out the grip. I actually put on a Magpul K2 grip. Um, I put on this BCM uh, foregrip and I put on some uh, Magpul Nimbus sights. I put on the Vortex Huey. And then I put on a cloud defensive rain three. First time experience with the rain three, it has essentially like 100,000 uh, candela luminosity. Don't know a whole lot about lights, uh, but I do know that it is super bright. The brightest light that I've ever had. I think that I've ever owned. I love it. I, I think it's amazing. It's, it's worth every penny. And the hardest thing though, was to just figure out where to put the sensor pad because I got the firearm with the quad rail and the charging handle is on this side, which it is ambidextrous. So you can actually change it over to the other side. Uh, but either way, it was just kind of hard to figure out where to put that sensor and still have room for my hand when I was shooting. Uh, and then I also put on iron sights, which people were like, well, just take them off, blah, blah, blah. And then you'll have room to maneuver that sensor on top. I ended up putting it over on the left-hand side. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a challenge. If I just had a M-lock handguard throughout, um, it would have actually been a lot easier for me to put it in different places. I did order the swivel mount, the offset mount from Cloud Defensive that did not come in before I can make this video. So I know that it seems like really protruding outward, but I am going to essentially get the offset mount for this light. Ferro concept sling on here. I love the fact that the ACR the, or the Jackal uh, comes already with quick detach mounts for your sling. So that was really great. Um, on It's a two, two point, so. What else? I didn't change out the trigger yet because I actually like the trigger. And then I did put on an Ambi selector from Strike Industries. Uh, when I went to, do something weird like when I went to put the selector switch back on safety uh, my like right knuckle kept on getting in the way of there's like a kind of a sharp part on the stock and it was actually making my knuckle bleed uh, not anything that's gonna make me not want to buy the rifle I just really needed an ambi selector so that I can kind of maneuver that selector with my index finger I like to do that and if I don't then I tend to bring it up and I was bleeding multiple times on the range so I was like, I need to fix that. 
So as far as accessories, I also put on the Sandman S suppressor. I would have liked to also put on my Diligent Defense can. However, it, the, it's a chemo muzzle brake. Um, however, you can get the adapter for the chemo to a hub industry standard to fit on any sort of like hub universal threaded suppressor. Uh, however, from Dead Air, they are generally out of stock. So be aware of that. All right, so um, in order to <clears throat> kind of operate this gas setting, so essentially to open up air is gonna be clockwise to the right, and then to you know close up that gas setting and not have as much gas flow through, you're gonna do it counterclockwise to the left. It really helps if you understand the directions that they go because I didn't. And um, I was shooting at the range multiple times and I was just like, I forgot which way it went. Does it go right? Does it go left? And I, you know, was like, maybe I should actually look into it and read about it. So I find it and I was like, oh, okay. And you have that light bulb moment. It would have been great because out of the box, it essentially did not have as much air pressure to um, actually reciprocate the round um, out and eject their casing. So I had to let in more air, but then when I put on my suppressor, it was over gassed. So then I had to, you know, then work with the gas setting to accommodate the suppressor. So just be aware that if you're gonna shoot suppressed versus unsuppressed, you're probably gonna be messing around with that gas setting and make sure that you do the timing really well if you're gonna use this as like a home defense gun because you don't want any uh, feeding issues or anything when you know your life is on the line. Takeaway from the gas setting, I, I just have to say this, I love this rifle, I would not not buy it. However, I do think, in my opinion, my personal opinion, and I love that you can use different rounds, different magazines and do all like the gas timings. I don't think, we needed eight gas settings. I think like four would have been fine. I think two, like, hey, suppressed, unsuppressed, you know? Hopefully you guys figured out because it can be kind of a pain in the ass. I feel like I spent a lot of time on the range just fooling around with the freaking gas settings uh, before I got to run everything just out of three o'clock. So anything between, you know, like four and six is under gas and then everything from like, you know, noon to two is uh, over gassed, so. I love the fact that it, it did have the monolithic upper on it. Uh, everything is just one part and there's not going to be a whole lot of things that are um, going to loosen up over time. Maybe it's your handguard, you know, loosening from the upper receiver and just the fact that it's like one block of reliable material. I actually like that it, it reassures me that I don't really have to worry about anything loosening up. Anyways long stroke gas piston system versus short stroke versus direct impingement. Uh, why would you want the long stroke versus maybe a direct impingement? So the fact that this was a long stroke and I'm just gonna take it apart because I wanna show you guys what I'm talking about. Essentially just taking out these um, takedown pins, taking those off and then detaching the lower from the upper. Then on the upper, you essentially push inward on this long spring and then we take out the bolt with the piston. So essentially long stroke gas piston system means that the piston, this guy, is directly connected to the bolt, this guy. Anytime that your rifle fires uh, and the casing you know, comes out, the bullet um, pushes forward, protrudes out of your barrel, then the gas is built up and they essentially will go, for the most part, down your barrel and meet uh, into a little gas port. So there's usually gas ports up in the upper receiver, and that is where the gas goes. Gas comes up with direct impingement, the gas just comes up and directly pushes on the bolt. And then the buffer assembly sends the bolt forward. So with a short stroke <clears throat> and a long stroke, the gas comes up, goes through that gas port, and the gas essentially pushes on the piston. With a short stroke, the piston is detached from the bolt and it's two separate parts and maybe sometimes they look a little bit different, but essentially the piston kind of travels just a little bit and then pushes on the bolt and then the bolt continues to travel the rest of the way. And then there's a spring behind the bolt, uh, this big guy, um, and it might be smaller in others, where then it sends the bolt back into its uh, you know, battery and then uh, allows the piston to come back to its um, rightful position. So with the long stroke gas piston system, um, it essentially will, the air will come up, 
push on the piston and then the entire bolt with the piston will travel the whole way down uh, and the spring will then send it back uh, into its home place. So the benefits of all of that, so if you're shooting like direct impingement, you know, maybe with the higher calibers, if you're doing like your own build, the timing of the pressure in the gas systems with the buffer assembly could get a little bit complicated and you could have, you know, issues with the gas port and just the literal um, gas uh, settings to get your rounds to cycle. Uh, but once you get it down, like, hey, it's fine, but um, then over time, like maybe your gas port will kind of like you know, gunk up or something, and you could allow for less gas to travel through and just have like maybe feeding issues over time. Uh, with the um, piston systems, there's just, you know, a, an actual piston, you know, coming back on that bolt. So to me, you know, it's not just like a bunch of gas coming back at that bolt. Um, it's, you know, something that's gonna be chunkier, have a little bit more force, a little bit more weight, and allow that to come back more with force and definitely cycle the round. Uh, I like the long stroke gas piston systems uh, because it is one moving part and there's less little parts that you might have to change out over time. Anytime that there's less parts to me, it means that, you know, I'm going to have less problems uh, potentially, right? Uh, there's some great guns out there that are a short stroke gas system, such as the FN SCAR, such as the SIG uh, MCX, such as the FAL, such as the POF 415 Edge. Uh, some really, really great platforms that all utilize a short stroke which are extremely reliable. So, um, but as we know, the AK utilizes the long stroke. And as we know, like that thing can run in pretty much anything. So I, I love the fact that um, it has a long stroke gas piston, um, gas setting, long stroke gas system sort of build. I like the fact that they've kind of like, you know, combined an AR and an AK as if they had a baby. So that's what I like. Anyways, um, that's essentially the breakdown of pros and cons. So now that I'm all dirty, I'm just gonna put this back together. If you take this apart, you might find that you're gonna have some issues putting it back together where it feels like the bolt isn't seating correctly. In order to fix that, what I have found to do is revert your uh, upper like this and then feed your bolt down in it with your piston. And then we'll kind of just let it fall into place, just like that. So essentially it's not the bolt catching on the upper, it's uh, the piston not wanting to get like totally in its home uh, and just getting caught up on some metal. So it's, it's really the piston. So if you can see it in there, you can actually see that like it doesn't fully want to seat and you just kind of have to move it around a little bit and it will seat. Then you go ahead and just put your spring back in. down and up. Cool. And then you just kind of put your takedown pin on top of the lower. All right. So in a nutshell, should you be buying the Jackal versus like an AR? You know, it's like, get both of them. Uh, but this is gonna be probably reliable. The short stroke actually might be more accurate because there's less recoil. Uh, with a long stroke, there's a lot of force coming back at you. So that's why you see me having a lot of recoil <clears throat> in, the, in the videos. No way to avoid that entirely, but that's what's great about, I guess, being able to adjust your gas setting. So, all right, last but not least, uh, the reason why I actually still really like this gun is because it reminded me of the actual ACR adaptive combat rifle uh, that was designed by Magpul in 2006, and then it was contracted out to Remington and Bushmaster. Remington took on the, uh, you know, military contract, and then Remington took on the civilian contract. Essentially, one would be full auto and one would not. Originally, uh, Manpole took, they pulled a lot of ideas from guns that were already kind of made. Um, so I'm not saying that they stole or anything. I think they just took some things and then tried to make like one good rifle. So they essentially like the monolithic upper and the um, charging handle placement from the SCAR, the FN SCAR, which was designed in 2004. And then they also took the short stroke gas piston setting from the uh, Armalite MK18, and then they also took um, just the lower components of a standard AR M16 style rifle. 
and then I believe the Heckler and Koch G36 with a lot of the um, like polymer parts to come out with the ACR, which is actually originally called the Masada. Um, Magpul said that they had, didn't have any affiliation to Israel. They just really liked the story of the Masada. Uh, when Remington took over it and Bushmaster, they essentially got rid of that name <clears throat> and then they gave it, um, I believe Remington was the Remington ACR um, adaptive combat rifle. It was produced between like 2010 and 2020, but running Bushmaster originally said that the civilian one would be about 1500 bucks. And then when it came out, it was like $2,700. So it didn't really take off as well as they thought. And then in 2020, uh, Remington filed bankruptcy and Bushmaster was a sister partner. So it had a huge effect on Bushmaster. And then I believe this year or last year, Franklin Armory actually bought Bushmaster. So um, I believe they're gonna be putting out some Bushmaster rifles, I'm not entirely sure, but the uh, Jackal really resembles the original ACR. And so a little piece of history and I love history. So um, for that reason, I, I just really kind of liked it as well. All right, guys, well, that is it. If you have any questions for me, like leave them in the comments below. If I left anything out, if you still have questions on whether you should buy this or not, the answer is yes, totally go buy one. Everyone needs a Jackal. And I'm also really curious about the Sabre 10 by PSA. So I like talking about guns. I wish that I had more time to do it and hopefully I can put out a review sometime soon. I will be doing a review about, um, uh, don't want to totally give it away, but something that helps you manage recoil on your pistols. And I hope to do that in the next week or so. So put your comments below. Um, if you have any questions for me, I'm kind of curious if you guys would like me to do a video just telling like my backstory. Uh, if you're wondering like how I got to this point in my life, like, um, uh, why do I like guns? And I don't know, like, why did I pick to do this? Most of you probably know my story if you follow me on, you know, social media and stuff. But if you would, you know, like to hear anything more about me and would like to, you know, get a feel for why I have the passion for firearms that I do and, and all of that, then feel free to let me know if you would like me to make a video on that. And other than that, uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and you guys all have a great day.